Hey there, this is Dan. I just came back from uh, PyCon US 2017. And in this video, I just wanted to give you a summary of my experience uh, attending PyCon, some of the main takeaways, and uh, you know, just to give you an idea of what it is like to attend a PyCon, why you should think about attending PyCon next year if you can, or going to a local uh, Python conference. And um, just to give you an idea of you know, what it would be like to attend PyCon, so you can get, uh, get a sense for whether or not it would make sense for you to, to attend in the future. So I'm also moving right now. So it was a pretty crazy couple of days and weeks for my wife and I, because we left the old place, went to PyCon, now we're trying to get settled in a new place. So it's, uh, it's been, yeah, just pretty stressful and pretty crazy, but um, also very exciting. So anyway, so back to PyCon. Um, this PyCon was awesome. So it was, for me, it was a huge shift to the previous PyCons that I attended, um, or like really the previous conferences that I attended. Because previously, like this was the first PyCon for me where I had my own agenda. So previously, it was always an employer that was paying for me to go to PyCon. And they had expectations on, um, you know, what they wanted to get out of it. Because it's expensive to send someone to a conference. So it was usually about, you know, making new connections that would benefit the company or, you know, uh, help us solve some problem that we were facing at work. Or um, it was about bringing back as much knowledge as possible. Like basically, um, I did a lot of like just going to talks, trying to soak up as much information as possible, taking notes like crazy, and then coming back and um, you know sharing summaries, uh, putting on talks at the company that I worked at, and, and just sharing that knowledge and that information um, among my team and other teams and the whole engineering department there. And, and that was really nice. That was really exciting. But uh, since I went independent, uh, this was the first time that I went to a conference or that I went to a, a big conference like PyCon where I, I had my own agenda, which was awesome. But it, of course, was also a little bit scary because, um, well, if you have no one who sort of tells you what to do, then it's you need to make your own priorities and you need to make your own decisions. And I love that freedom. But... Um, you know, freedom also has uh, has a bit of a cost to it. And so for me, my agenda, I guess, was to just make as many friends as possible. You know, just walk around, try and chat with as many people as possible. And it was much more about the relationships uh, than it was about going to talks and trying to bring back that information. So with the talks at a conference like PyCon, they're usually all recorded. So at PyCon, they're always recorded. They even put subtitles in it. It's great. And uh, you can find all these talks on a website called pyvideo.org, which is this giant uh, archive uh, repository of these conference recordings that have to do with Python. And so there were a couple of talks that I really wanted to see and unfortunately couldn't get in. So one of my uh, personal Python heroes, heroes is uh, Raymond Hedinger. And his talks are just fantastic. Uh, so he's a core Python developer. And um, I really wanted to attend his talk. And unfortunately, for, for fire safety reasons, they had to close the doors. They couldn't let anyone else in because people were already sitting on the floor and everything. And of course, I also attended the, the keynotes. And um, uh, that, that was all fun. But really, I spent the majority of, of my time, I spent uh, in what is called the hallway track. So people refer to the hallway track as um, sort of the informal uh, conversations and, and informal like knowledge sharing that goes on when you're not going to a, a pre-planned session that's on the schedule, but you just go and you know hang out with people in the hallway and chat with them, learn what they're up to, you know exchange contact information with them, and, and basically make friends. Like you're just out there talking to people. And, uh, and, and making new friends and trying to see what they're, what they're interested in, what, how you could help them, how maybe if they can help you answer a question. And so um, I spend a lot of time just doing that, you know, hanging out at PyCon and trying to chat with as many people as possible. And I was there, there with uh, some uh, co-workers of mine um, or previous co-workers of mine. We were all, all sharing, sharing this Airbnb um, relatively close to the conference venue. So that was a great setup just for, you know, strolling around and meeting people. And I would say that worked really well. So long story short, um, 
sometimes it doesn't make sense to attend the actual technical talks because sure, like you might be able to ask a question, right? Um, you can go up and um, you can ask a, a public question. They have microphones at the end of a talk or you have maybe a better chance to catch the speaker right after and ask them a question on their talk. But realistically, you can always watch these talks at home, you know, in the comfort of your own home. You can take notes, you can pause them and just watch the recordings. And this is what I'm gonna do. I mean, it's, it's sure it's not the same, like maybe there's a little bit less energy that way, but, but really um, it's a pretty good experience. And for the technical stuff, I think that's the way to do it. Uh, because you only, like for me, you know, there's only ever so a um, few times where I'm like at a conference venue with three, like 3,500 other, um, uh, other Python enthusiasts and people who love Python. And for me, the value is just trying to go out and like meet as many people as possible. And so, so that was a huge shift for me. Uh, attending this PyCon and and it was great you know I met some people that I've been looking up to for so long like for example I, I was able to meet uh, Kenneth Reitz the creator of the request library and he's a great guy and he's a you know I re remember like when I released my first open source project I was like damn like this guy is just awesome he's so productive and he's creating so much valuable uh, work and it's it's you know he's putting himself out there and he's just just churns out this work and it's really good work and so I was always really inspired by that and it was great to be able to finally meet him and now we're actually working together on a little project um, called pph.org and I've got another video on that if you want to check it out. So so that was great. Uh, also I was finally able to meet my friend uh, Michael Kennedy of the Talk Python podcast for the first time in person and uh, that, that was that was also great. It's just it's just so much fun when you can finally you know put a face to someone that you've been uh, chatting with for so long or that you've kind of known virtually for so long. So that, that was awesome. I was also able to meet uh, Brian Aachen of the Python Bytes and Python Testing podcast and uh, Tobias Macy of the Podcast in It um, podcast. And it was just, just awesome to be part of that community and just you know to meet a whole bunch of people who are doing so much great work for uh, for Python and the Python community. So for me, like it really shifted from attending these technical talks towards trying to meet people who do inter interesting stuff in the community. And um, I think now looking back, I think there's a time for everything, right? Like I, I remember the first couple of conferences that I went to when I was less experienced as a programmer. I just got so much value out of attending the technical talks. And, and plus back then, usually the there weren't really um, the video recordings. If there were video recordings, they weren't like directly accessible. So there was a lot of value for me to go to the, the technical talks and take notes and just soak up that information. And, but I noticed that over time, if that was, you know, that learning effect, it was kind of diminishing. It was petering out. And now I feel like the value for me and uh, quite frankly, also the value for me building a sustainable business in the Python space, you know, a sustainable training business in the Python space, the value for me there is much more in making those relationships and going out and chatting with people. And um, another, so for, another great uh, experience that I had there was um, I'm, I'm running this forum called uh, Pythonista Cafe, which is a peer-to-peer -peer learning community for people who want to get better at Python and so for example, if you're, maybe you're working from home like I am, or maybe you're, um, you're working with a remote team and, uh, or you're the only Python developer at your place of work and you don't really have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of um, opportunity to talk about Python and the problems that you're facing or talk about programming in general um, with the people around you or ask your career questions or job hunting questions. And so Pythonista Cafe, the idea is to kind of provide this community, uh, to provide it remotely. And uh, we have this, this yeah, like bustling, bustling community of uh, about 85 Python developers now in this private forum. And uh, we help each other out. We answer each other's questions. And we try and, and just, you know, push our learning forward together. And it's been, it's been pretty awesome. And so actually a couple of people there that uh, are part of this forum, they also went to PyCon and we had our own like little mini meetup there. 
and that was just a surreal experience like actually you know chatting with these guys on uh, on this forum before that and then just sitting down at PyCon and having coffee together was was pretty cool and it's just um yeah it was honestly it was just incredible like it was really really heartwarming for me it was like yeah that is so cool like we just started this and now we're sitting here and we're chatting about python and um it uh it uh, yeah it, it just really made me realize like how powerful you know this sound, sounds really stupid i probably look like like an idiot you know smiling into the camera and be like just awestruck by oh you know we chatted on a forum then we met and had coffee together at PyCon. I know it's it's probably a little bit ridiculous, but like honestly, like, like thinking back about it, it's like this is really how I felt, and I got a lot of joy out of that. And it made me realize like just how powerful the internet is for these things, right? Where it's like, yeah, this is people from all over the world, and now we got together and sat in this room in Portland, and we were just chatting about stuff that before that we were just you know writing uh, about for for a couple of weeks, and now we're just sitting there. So so that was great. Anyway, um, the other thing that was really nice, and I think I'm going to take more advantage of that in um, in a future, or like hopefully if I can attend next year's PyCon and the ones after that. Um, so, what was uh, PyCon has these open spaces, and the idea of an open space is that there's a giant uh, schedule that um, stands somewhere near the registration desks. And there's these note cards and pens. And what you can do is you can just find an open slot there on the schedule or open spot on the schedule. And you just take one of these note cards and you write down what you want to talk about. And um, you put that on the schedule and that assigns you a room for, you know, for this topic. And that means other people can see that there's a conversation going on. Uh, for example, um, uh, me and some other people, we put on a con uh, a conversation around marketing for developers, which you know can be a little bit of a loaded topic. And another one was uh, Python trainers, uh, Python trainers get together or something. So we just pasted that there, and then people can just come and sit down in the room, and you kind of know they're all interested in the same in the same topic, and you just chat. So there's no there's no pre planned like um, there's no presentation. Or, uh, I mean, there isn't even like a whiteboard or, or a projector or anything. So it's like, it's all about like sitting down and just talking about stuff. And um, I, I went to a couple of those sessions. And I think next year I want to try and go to many, many more. Because it was, um, it was, again, a great way to make a personal connection. Just to meet some people in person. And to put some faces to people that you've maybe only seen on Twitter or online. So... So in summary, you know, to, to kind of reel all of this back in, in summary, the biggest, um, or what I liked the best about attending PyCon this year was, um, yeah, building all of these new relationships and, and just meeting people and hanging out uh, rather than going to all of the technical talks. And there's so many ways you can do it. And also Portland is a beautiful city. So um, yeah, highly recommend it if you have the chance to attend a PyCon in the future or any other conference for that matter. Uh, I think Python conference, honestly, are some of the best tech conferences you can attend just because the community is so great and so friendly and it puts a lot of focus on diversity and kind of fixing some of the problems that um, really bug the tech community at large. And, and you can see that everywhere, right? Like you can see that in the speaker lineup. You can see that in the, um, just in the general, uh, the organization, um, in the in the keynotes and it's just a common theme that's just seeping uh, through the whole event and um, and and that's great like honestly I I just had such a great time attending PyCon this year and um, it's it's just one of my one of my favorite conferences so if you get the chance to go go and if you see me then tap me on the shoulder and we can grab coffee or chat cool well um, I hope you got something out of this video. It's definitely a lot of fun for me to be able to ramble on about uh, PyCon and Python. And um, if you want to see more <laughs> videos like that and Python tutorials and some other like hands-on Python teaching, then hit the subscribe button in the lower right in this video and uh, I'll, I'll chat with you in the future. All right, talk soon and happy Python.